Greetings, welcome to my tips and tricks video. The first thing I'm going to talk about is toxic goo. It's great for getting rads to gain mutations. Um, it has no negative effects when you drink it and it only weighs one pound each. So you see there you can chug it for a bunch of rads and use it to get mutations or use it in a rad rage build. You find the toxic goo inside the West Tech facility and you just walk up to it and hit square to collect it. Next up is handmade rifle plans. It's one of the strongest rifles you can make or obtain in the game for semi-auto or full auto. It is a really good rifle, but you can only generally reliably obtain the plans between level 15 and 20. And where you need to go is either the Watoga Station, the Watoga Shopping Center, or Harper's Ferry. There's a vendor in each of those locations. You check the notes section and it should be there listed for sale. Um, if you're past level 20, the only other way I know to do it is there's a penitentiary that has an event at it that has the chance when you complete that event to get the reward of the handmade weapon plan, but it's rare. So another thing you want to do, especially if you're starting out making a new character, which I found very helpful with finding resources and gathering everything I need um, so I'm not running short and also so I'm not overfilling my inventory or overfilling my stash back at my camp. You go into your pit boy you go to your junk items menu, and then you go into component view. In the component view, you're going to want to tag important things that you are going to be needing to find for either crafting. You got a certain item you need to craft, you can tag it in here. Um, if you just want to make sure you're always collecting a certain thing, you can tag it in here. Um, some of the main ones I recommend to tag and always leave tagged is going to be aluminum, aluminum, gears, screws, plastic, springs, adhesive, and lead. Those are going to be the main ones you probably want to tag and always leave tagged. Um, all those are very important. They're used in a lot of things. Lead's used to make um, bullets. If you're a ranged character, you're going to need a lot of lead, so you're going to want that tagged at all times. Adhesives pretty much used in everything. Screws, gears, and springs are used in everything. Plastic is used a lot, and aluminum, aluminum is used a lot. Um, copper is used in a lot of things. It's kind of rare to find, so I recommend you tag that. Um, and what that does is it helps you not only not pick up stuff that you really don't need to be looking for, or picking up and overfilling your inventory while you're out exploring. So it allows you to explore for longer periods of time without becoming over encumbered or needing to find a workbench to scrap everything down. But it also helps with your stash management so you're not overfilling your stash with a bunch of junk that you might not ever use. If you're only picking up the things you have tagged, you're very seldom going to run into the issue of overstocking your stash and having inventory management issues. It, it makes the gameplay a lot smoother. And personally, I think it makes it a lot more enjoyable because you're not spending a ton of time doing inventory management. So I'm here at the Emmett Mountain Disposal site. It's right here on the map. It's probably about a 10 minute walk or so from Vault 76, maybe 15. Um, once you get here, you can get a level 15 hazmat suit that will let you get into the White Springs nuke zone to power level yourself up or to farm for legendaries pretty early on. Um, generally in the White Springs nuke zone I can get about 20 or 30 levels from 
when I get in there and all you gotta do is have some you gain the experience for killing it um, so once you get in here you go immediately to your left and there should be a couple of hazmat suits here and they'll spawn in the lowest I've ever seen them spawn is level 15 if a higher level is in here before you are they might spawn in at a higher level if they do and you need a lower level hazmat suit you can go ahead and um, you know change servers or whatever to try and get one your level also in here there's the rad showers so if you don't have any rad away you can hit that button there and go through the rad showers and lose a bunch of rads so here we are at my base um, what I'm showing you here is the best mobile base I've I've ever made that think it works better than building your base on top of stairs. What you do is you place four foundations as high up as it lets you place them wherever you place it originally and then inside you can fit every single crafting station you need. You can even fit the power armor station here if you needed to. Not an issue. I really don't use power armor on this guy so I don't have a power armor station but every crafting bench will fit in here and then you can put your turrets on top of the base for that defense of having them overlook your, the rest of your base when when mobs attack it or if another player comes to, to grief you a little bit your turrets will have a nice clean line of sight on them um, but yeah I found placing your base on four foundations and placing everything inside of it is the best mobile base design I have ever worked with. I've tried doing building on top of stairs as some other people shown in videos. I've always had issues placing bases like that but this little tiny 2x2 two two shack never had any issues placing it wherever I built it. Next is the stim pack recipe. If you want to be able to make your own stim packs you go ahead you have to join the enclave first and here's the enclave bunker to start the quest to join the enclave you're going to want to go to this location this location here you get in there you go through the steps in that location and that will start the quest line to join the enclave once you have joined the enclave and you've gained access to the bunker you can go here to the medical bay and inside the medical bay here there will be vendors and you talk to the vendors here go over to notes and there'll be that stim pack recipe for you there there's also the antibiotics that works like disease cure so if you want to make your own disease cure type things you can get those antibiotic recipe too another thing you can do if you have a vampiric weapon and you need to heal you can just swing it there um, you see that it heals you just swinging at the air you don't even got to hit anything you just swing around you'll get some health and what you need to be able to do that is a vampiric weapon and I got a vampire's death claw next thing I want to talk about here is underrated perks the first underrated perk I'm gonna be talking about it's gonna be dodgy and a lot of people don't like it because of that action point cost per hit which is 30 action point cost per hit but you get to avoid 30 percent damage before you even consider your damage reduction values and if you're not in a group and you couple that with lone wanderer that's another 20 percent so that's 50 percent damage off the top that you're not going to take so there should be a death claw up here and I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit how it works. So I'm going to run up here and see if I can't find that death claw in here. Here's the death claw. It's level 91 glowing one. And you can see it's hitting me. My action points are going down. But my health is not. And that's because of that 30% dodgy and that's coupled with the Lone Wanderer. But when I lose my action points here in a second, you see now I'm taking damage. A lot of it. So let's go ahead and get rid of this Death Claw. 
And so, yeah, that's one of the perks I feel is really underrated. Another perk I feel that's really underrated is Revenant. If you play in a group, you get 50% damage bonus for two whole minutes. For two minutes, you deal 50% more damage when a player revives you. So if you're playing in a group, that's a huge damage buff for two minutes. So if you're trying to kill something big or you're just trying to get through like an instanced area or something, you get 50% more damage for two minutes. Pretty big and it's kind of underrated. I don't see a lot of people using it, but it's still a pretty pretty good perk. Um, another one is Nerd Rage, where all below 20% health you gain 40 damage resist and 20% damage and 15% action point regen. Yeah, and that's one I don't see a lot of people using because they look at that you have to be at below 20% health. But when you hit that threshold, and if you're using dodgy with that you can you can survive pretty easily at that threshold especially if you're using serendipity the thing about serendipity though from what i've tested with it it does not work in power armor so if you are a power armor user serendipity does not work or i have not seen it work while in power armor with that perk equipped and i've i've tested it multiple times um feel free to comment if you've used it in power armor and it's worked for you, but I personally have never seen serendipity work while in power armor. Um, a couple more underrated perks that I'd like to talk about would be chemist is really good for crafting stim packs. It will double the amount of stim packs you use. So if you equip chemist and then you equip super duper, you could, in theory, get four stim packs for the cost of one. Um, and then if you're going to turn those stim packs into diluted stim packs, you could get eight stim packs instead of two or four. Because with the chemist perk, it doubles the amount of chems you get. So instead of two diluted stim packs, you get four. And then with super duper, you could get another four. So you could get eight. So it's a great way to get a lot of stim packs really quick. Um, some other perks that people don't really see using a lot or seem to know a lot about is Weapon Artisan. It repairs your weapon to 200% normal maximum condition, which means that it will do more damage when it's over 100% condition. And it will last you a lot, a lot longer. Another good one is for Fix It Good does the same thing that weapon artisan does but for armor and power armor it repairs your armor to 200 percent of normal condition which gives you more armor and it lasts a whole lot longer another one under agility is white knight at level three it will only cost one of each material to repair your armor so it makes repairing your armor not a big deal anymore instead of having to pay like five or six or seven or eight ballistic fibers now you only pay in one so that's a huge one right there is white knight to get 90 percent to get 90 percent reduced um repair cost which means that everything all the armors only take one of each material to repair um it's about it for underrated perks that I see that I've heard that a lot of people don't really use a whole lot don't know a whole lot about with five intelligence you can pretty much craft everything you need in the game um, five intelligence lets you max out every crafting perk and, and use them all the only ones that would take six intelligence would be if you want all the science perks equipped at level two That'd be a total of six intelligence. There are three different science perks. So if I go over here to intelligence, I can show you the three science perks that we have are, you got science, science expert, science master. These two are worth maxing out. Honestly, I'll leave that level one and there you go. Now you can have all three of those equipped and craft what you need to craft. But everything else is only going to be up to 5 intelligence. 
going beyond five intelligence might be because you have some kind of power armor build or maybe you want to do like a pure crafting build um, but five intelligence will let you build anything any recipe you can think of that you can find in the game okay so let's say you just made a new character you're out exploring you're not level 30 yet you don't have starch genes for those of you that don't know what starch genes does is if you gain a mutation from from getting too many rads right away will never cure the mutation so it lets you permanently keep that mutation even with using right away or decontamination showers decontamination showers will also cure mutations but let's say you're pretty early on in the game and you just got an awesome mutation like marsupial you got 20 extra carry weight and you can jump extra high so you you got all these reds on your hit point bar you don't want to lose that mutation but you don't know how else to get rid of those reds without using rad away so you can actually play the game and survive beyond just getting one shot by everything so this is how you do it to lose the rads without using rad away or decontamination sour and without losing the mutation what you basically do it's pretty simple is you commit suicide so you go somewhere you find something big and strong to kill you you run up to it and then you basically just let it attack you until you die and eventually it will kill me and you can see there I lost about 15 20 percent of my reds and you can just keep doing this until you get all the way back to 100 percent available hit points and that will allow you below or before you get that starch genes perk to keep any mutation you gain even at low levels without having to use right away or decontamination showers and lose and lose that mutation it's a great way to keep those early level mutations so you don't have to farm form when you're higher level to get mutations the best way I have found is using that toxic goo that we talked about earlier on in this video you just drink some of that toxic goo and you can get you some mutations and then go kill yourself and lose the rads and you can get some really good mutations early on in the game to to make the game easier to play so you're not having such a hard time another great way to get rads is to stand and just stand some water go find a nuclear disposal site stand by that anything that gives you rads will give you a mutation you can only get one mutation once per hour unless you change servers you can go to one server get a mutation change the server and then get another mutation and so on and so forth all right that's it for the video i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any tips or tricks that you like to share with everybody else please post them below please subscribe and don't forget when i hit 200 subscribers i will be giving away 15,000 caps to a random subscriber on the playstation 4 all right talk to you next time bye